In case you missed it, in the last video, I talked about generative UI and this little application that I've been building out, which is basically just an application that will showcase the concepts of providing an AI with a bunch of different components that it can then call to actually serve functionality to the user. In this example, it's a weights tracker. I can say, give me all of my workouts. When I say give me all my workouts, instead of just responding with normal text like a normal LLM or GPT would, it's actually gonna give me an enhanced response. It's gonna give me a full card, which I wrote. I made this card. You can tell because it looks like shit. Um, and it'll give me this and all this stuff. And I think that this has a ton of potential to be a way that we interact with a lot of applications in the future. But for today, I wanna to talk about how this is actually implemented because there's a lot of really interesting stuff there. So first and foremost, I wanna get this out of the way. This is written in Next.js, and I do honestly believe that Next.js is probably the best solution for writing these AI applications, these generative UI apps where we need to provide the AI with a bunch of different components, allow it to serve those out, add functionality to those, do all that stuff together. I think Next.js is the best solution for that. I wanna be super clear. This is not me getting rid of SpellKit. This is not me changing stacks. I know I'm known for doing that. I know I do that a lot, but that's not what's happening here. I love SpellKit. I have it, um, by the time you're watching this, there's actually a really good chance that it's in production already, but if not, it will be super soon. I've put it in production multiple times. I love the framework. I'm gonna keep using it. I think it has an incredibly bright future and it is an incredibly powerful way to solve problems. But I think that this is a different set of problems. I think that the new RSC model of component-based data fetching, of putting all of your stuff into one little piece right here is perfect for this brand new model of building applications. And I wanna talk about why today. So first and foremost, what are we using to even make this possible? I am using the Vercel AI SDK, and this is an incredibly powerful SDK. Honestly, one of the best things I think Vercel has made in quite a while. This is such a good SDK, and I think it's so underutilized and slept on. I've heard no one talking about this, and I think there is so much potential here that I just had to talk about it and try it, where basically what they do is they provide you all of the pieces you need to put together these generative AI apps. They make it so that you can do stuff like this where we go through and we have our conversation with the LLM and it can call search images and it can give us this co component. So this SDK gives us so many of the things that we need to build these applications. It allows us to use AI state, UI state. It gives a nice guide for setting all this up and it works perfectly with Next.js. And I wanna talk about why Next.js makes so much sense for this model. This is not gonna be a tutorial on how to use this AI SDK. I think that is honestly needed, and I think probably the way I wanna do that is I'm just gonna do, um, I typically, for my tutorials, what I always do is I kinda of start with a finished app and I work backwards, and I'm like, okay, so here are all the different pieces, here's how each thing works. But I wanna try just doing a like build along with me type thing. So once I finish this example that I'm working on right now, the weights app, uh, I'll come up with another concept for these or something like that. And then we'll go through and just actually build it out. So that'll probably be like a two hour long video where I go through and build it out. So for this video, I'm not gonna get super deep into the implementation, but rather the conceptual stuff here that allows this to actually happen. The reason why Next.js makes so much sense for this new AI generative UI, UI model is because of React Server Components. For those of you who are somehow not already familiar, React Server Components are a brand new way of writing React Components. And these are effectively, they're React Components, but they execute once on the server and they allow us to do really cool things like just doing a basic data fetch in the root and then using that immediately down in here. So what I can do is I can make this little get all workouts function. If you look at what's in here, this is just a database call to get my workouts out of my database. I go in here, I fetch my workouts just in the top of my component, and then I go through, pull everything down in here. All of my data fetching logic is just put right into the server component. If we wanted to make these um, interactive, we could turn them into client components. A great example of that is our create workout card. I have this little use client directive at the top, which basically means that I can now use state in here. I can go ahead and run all this stuff. We also have access to server actions where I can go ahead and I have this little create workout function. If we look at this little helper.ts file, I added use server at the top. So whenever we go ahead and call this create workout, this is actually just gonna be a server side call. So even though this create workout card is a client side component, this create workout will be called server side and that's insanely powerful. I know there's a lot of complexity here. This is not gonna be a discussion about RSCs and all these different things in the JS world. I totally understand and the more I use these, like I totally get that for a lot of people, this is a lot of complexity and there's a lot of stuff. There's a huge amount of abstractions here. There's a lot of complexity. 
But I also think that there's a tremendous amount of power here. Once you get it and once it clicks how all this stuff works, it is so freaking powerful. Because what we're dealing with here in RSC land is we're dealing with components that can completely encapsulate everything we need for our application logic in one place. You imagine this is like my UI right here or whatever. I can go ahead and create a component on here, which is my like create workout component using that example from before. And then this component right here can contain all the UI logic. It can contain all of the data fetching logic. It can contain all of the data posting logic for the mutations. Everything can go in this nice little box. And I can take this box and just stick it wherever the heck I want. If you look over here at the view all workouts card, I don't need to go up to get server side props, fetch some data down, prop drill it in. I don't need to go to some external API or do whatever. Nah, I just have a little server side component here which will run on the server. All I have to do is wrap it in a suspense boundary to get some nice little loading UI going, stick this into my application, data fetching is all handled right here, runs on the server, streams in, beautiful. It's awesome. I love how this works. It's really, really cool. And the reason why I want to talk about all this stuff is because of how this works with the LLM. When we go back over here to my little LLM and you can see this little application I'm building, if I just say, you know, what can you do? This is going to give me a normal LLM response. Or if I just asked it, you know, who is the president or who is doing what? It'll give me a normal LLM response. But what this LLM has, it has some extra tools and functions which it can call. Going into my action.tsx file, and this is the place where all of the AI stuff is set up and run. I'll have this code base link down below so you can take a look at it for yourself. But what we're doing down here is I added this little section in here within my AI bootstrapping area, which is basically just a bunch of functions that my AI can call. It can call view all workouts. It can call create new workout. And when it calls create all workouts, I'm telling the AI, okay, here's what you can do. You can allow the user to view all their past workouts on a nice little data table. I can give it some parameters to pass in. So say maybe we wanted to have this be dynamic. I like wanted to have a thing where you could view all of the art pieces, like in that example on their website, you put those parameters in here. Then down here, what we can do is we go ahead and we just actually stream out the content. So what I'm doing is I'm basically saying, when you call this function, I want you to send down this UI. So instead of having to do a bunch of complicating data, complicated data fetching and put a bunch of different stuff in different places, go up to my load function like you would in SvelteKit and then pull that down and then prop drill all that stuff around. No. We just have all of that logic and all of that stuff working within our component itself. So basically all we have to do is just put the component in here. Literally all I'm doing to make my little view all workouts component work is I just put view all workouts. I wrap it in a suspense to make sure that we have a loading state and then it works. I made this other little test RSC to illustrate really how this works so you can see it where if we go in here, this test RSC, all it's doing is I just have a little delay function in here. So it'll delay for four seconds before it actually displays anything out. Then I'll just say RSC from server. So when we go over here into my UI and I say, um, show me my workouts and it goes through and it fetches everything in, it'll say loading test RSC for four seconds and then it streams it in. It's that freaking easy. All of the issues of like figuring out how to orchestrate data fetching, figuring out how to orchestrate loading states, figuring out how to get our data fetching working in these components is gone. Because if, if for cells right, if even to an extent I'm right, and this becomes a way that we want to interact with our applications, I think that this model of having these components, which run on the server, which can do all their data fetching in there, which can do their data mutations in there, having these beautifully packaged components and just socketing those in wherever you want is going to be a hundred times more powerful with AIs in the future because the AI can just pick from this toolbox and put them in. That's why I went with this over SvelteKit because I love SvelteKit to death. It's a phenomenal framework, but I don't think it makes as much sense here because in SvelteKit, a lot of our data fetching is tied to our load functions. And I don't want we don't want to have to set up like a load function for each one of these. I just want all that logic in a component. And SvelteKit does not lean into components nearly as much as it leans into pages. So if you have an app like InsiderViz, which is heavily based around pages, I love SvelteKit for that. I actually like it a lot better than Next.js. But when we're doing heavily component-based work, which is what this AI stuff is, Next.js makes so much sense. So that's why I wanted to show off. I wanted to show off why Next.js makes sense here. Like I said, we'll do a tutorial on this in the future. If you guys enjoyed, make sure you like and subscribe. And otherwise, I will talk to you soon.